Dear students, today I am going to discuss on the topic systematic drawing and description of appendixes, particularly pyriform, triangular, and other type of appendix. Drawing and description of the lithic tools are the distinct method of expression appropriate to scientific objectives. It provides complementary methods of representation which can be used to enrich the quality of illustration of the lithic tools for practical purposes. The aim of artifact illustration or drawing of lithic tool is to use two dimensional images to provide an intelligible description of a three dimensional object. By combining direct graphical presentation with symbolic convention, we obtain an excellent means of communication, a universal language which not only enriches textual description but may be the only source of information for further resources. Before starting a systematic drawing, one must follow certain procedures. They are as follows. Number one, planning. Number two, orientation of the given specimen. And number three, the nature of presentation. And lastly, the techniques of drawing. While planning for drawing, the students should keep in mind the following points. Number one, what to draw. And number two, how to draw. Let's come to how to draw. For a student of prehistoric archaeology, it is not possible to draw each and every artifacts for each cultural phases or industries that are housed in the departmental museums or all the collections of the department concerned. Students should make the choice of the spell out lithic tools that will be best represent the result of the study to get the first hand knowledge of the nature of prehistoric archaeology. Next point, how to draw. For the trainees or students, a traditional graphic technique using set squares, pencils, divider or compass, scale, slide caliper, model clay or putin or plasticine, etc. is the indispensable basis for an effective drawing. The next point is layout convention or orientation. Any description of an artifact, whatever it be, is usually based on its orientation. Whether the edge is a left edge or right edge depends on which way the artifact is placed. There are five situations to be considered. They are the course unreaders or readers debitus products, shape tools, smaller tools such as scrapers, borers, burines, etc. Whatever the type of the blank use and tools on a natural blank. Now let's come to the nature of presentation. Although multiple views allow the comprehensive representation of a three-dimensional artifact, symbolic conventions are added to the figurative drawings in order to help the reading along. These symbols highlight the technological information indispensable to the comprehension of the way of the artifact was manufactured and used. For instance, a debitus product is symbolized by a cross arrow with or without a dot, whereas the double dot indicates the presence of a bird and so forth. Now let's come to the fourth point that is technique of drawing. First of all, the students should measure the length of the given specimen that is the stone artifact. Thereafter, each student should draw two horizontal straight lines on their drawing sheets, forming the outer boundaries, proximal and distal ends, that is, working teeth and butt end of the given tube, but leaving some space suitable for drawing the 
cross-section of the same two. Secondly, a student should draw an imaginary line across the longitudinal axis of the given two, which dissect the specimen into two halves. Then, the specimen is placed facing one of each horizontal halves parallel to the plane surface of the practical table and measure the highest of each point of each working teeth but in the two lateral sides. If three of these bones get similar height, it should be considered that the given specimen is placed and fixed properly. Otherwise, the position of the tools should be changed and repeated the same procedure until the artifact attains its accurate position. If it is placed so, the next step is fixing the tool in its proper position by filling the gaps using model clay. After getting its proper position, the tool is then transferred to the drawing sheet. The next step is to find out the prominent ridges or arises and important points which would help each student while drawing the given specimen accurately. Hence, each student should take a soak stick and gently roll over the dorsal surface of the given tool so that prominent ridges are marked nicely. Then the outline of the tool is drawn by dots using a set square and a pointed and a sharp pencil. While drawing the outline of the tool soap, each student should mark the end points or starting points of the ridges, which will help them while drawing the accurate position of the flex curve of each supplied specimen. The fourth step is to remove the stone artifact from the drawing sheet and place it properly. Thereafter, accurate measurements should be taken by using two set square and a divider or compass or two pieces of paper to get an accurate measurement of each point, medial or central. At least three measurements should be taken from three different mark lateral sides. measurements thus taken is again plotted on the drawing sheet but within the drawn outline figure of the specimen. An arc should be drawn for each measurement by using a compass to get a fixed point. The point where the arc or arches cross is normally considered to be the accurate point which is the teaser point. The same procedure is repeated while drawing the outline and different flex curves of the profile and ventral views also. Final step is the drawing of its cross section. The cross section of the appendixes is normally taken at its half length along its axis where the maximum thickness is also taken. It is normally drawn just below the drawing of the dorsal surface. Next point, assessing. The quality of the drawing of the given specimen should be assessed to ensure that it can be correctly interpreted. In fact, an aesthetically pleasing drawing is not necessarily an informative one. There are six indispensable criteria to be considered for the adequate assessment of a graphical representation. They are number one scale, number two orientation, number three descriptive views, number four removals, number five symbols, and number six style of drawing. 
after examining all these criteria, the drawing of the given space means should be assessed. Now let's come to the concluding remark of this discussion. Drawing and description of lithic tools are the distinct method of expression appropriate to scientific objectives. The aim of artifact drawing and description are to use two dimensional drawings to provide the description of a three dimensional artifacts. Before starting a systematic drawing, students should plan to select the supplied specimen, keeping in mind what to draw and how to draw and how to describe. While drawing the tool, each student should allow the general principles of drawing, the layout conventions, description of the artifacts, graphic designs, and techniques based on the material and surfaces. Similarly, each student should use the conventional symbols when required.